So most of 2023, you had a lot of these fear mongers saying that the housing market was going to crash in 2023. Well, home values actually went up. Not only did they not crash when no one thought they could, they actually increased yet again after a record setting year in 2022. So yes, did transactions plummet? Absolutely. But we're going to talk about that and uh, what's to come in 2024 with the housing market. And so these are my housing market predictions and how they how you can navigate them as a real estate agent as a mortgage professional how you can navigate the housing market this year in 2024 to increase your business so let's jump right into it all right so let's first start talking about uh what everyone's talking about which is mortgage rates all right so this is obviously with mortgage rates the the cause that slowed down the housing market in 2023 Everything came to a halt. And in October, rates got up as high as 8% and transactions as a result plummeted. We all know that. The question is, well, what does the foreseeable future look like for mortgage interest rates? So my prediction is as we ended Q4 in 2023, we saw those hovering right around 6.6, And I believe that uh, at the end of Q1 of this year, 2024, we'll see rates at about 6.5%. And as we get through uh, closer to the end of the year, we'll see rates right around 6%. We might even see rates in the high fives at the end of 2024. That's a major, major difference from these buyers and, uh, and sellers who have been on the sidelines really at a standstill because mortgage rates were the highest they've been in a very, very long time. So what's to come as a result of lower mortgage interest rates? Well, let's talk about first affordability. This has been the big headline uh, that the media loves to talk about is that the average consumer, which is true, barely could afford the average priced home. When you look at the average price home in this country right now, it's about $364,000. When we look and say, okay, as of October 2023, at 8% uh, interest rates, the, the average payment was $2,670, just under $2,700 a month. And for a lot of homeowners uh, in the US, that was just too far out of reach. So if we look at the average mortgage payment for 2024 and the average blended interest rate of what I believe to be 6.375, Housing payments, on average, the average payment goes down by about $400 per month. So the question is, okay, if lower interest rates helps affordability, what does that do to demand? Well, here's what I believe is going to happen. In the end of 2023, we saw mortgage applications uh, end up at about $1.5 trillion. I believe that in 2024, demand as a result of lower interest rates and affordability becoming uh, better that you will see an uptick in mortgage applications. And I think we'll end the year probably at about 1.9 trillion uh, mortgage applications. We're already seeing that uh, happen right now. Every If you look at the mortgage applications week over week over week over week, you see them increasing week over week, even during the holiday season, which is which is interesting. I believe that as we get past 2024, mortgage rates will continue to come down. And demand will yet again increase. I believe that in 2025, we'll see somewhere around 2.3 trillion mortgage applications. So now we've got more demand, which is a great thing for the housing market, for real estate professionals. We get a lot more people that were on the sideline, off the sideline, and into the game of transacting business. Well, what does that mean? Well, as a result of that, I believe home sales will increase. You see, 2023, although it's in our rearview mirror, was was a very difficult year for a lot of real estate agents because most of your businesses were probably down 20, 30, maybe 40 percent transaction uh, from a transaction perspective, and we'll probably end up the year across the country at about 4.5, 4.6 million when the final totals come in. Which, I mean, quite frankly, we haven't seen. A market that slow since the Great Recession in 2008, 2009. So that was a very, very difficult time that's in the rear view. I believe things are going to get better. 
as interest rates come down, uh, demand we just talked about increasing, now we've got more opportunity. I believe that in 2024, we should come closer to 5 million transactions in 2025, getting all the way back up to about 5.5 million transactions. If you think about this just in terms of opportunity, you say, okay, if there's 5 million home sales and right now uh, pending these lawsuits and what's going to happen with the buyer agency here in this country, that means that there's still about 10 million commission check opportunities for you and I, for those agents that actually put forth the work. So home sales will increase as a result of higher demand. So let's look at home prices. Well, like I mentioned, all the people that were betting on a huge uh, housing market crash in 2023, they were dead wrong. And this is what I was talking about all year because they don't, they're do not they not looking at the numbers. Uh, obviously, they weren't looking at the numbers or they weren't looking at some of the data because home prices went up by 4.5% year over year. We ended up with the average home price in this country at around $364,000 in 2023. And it's my belief that we'll see home prices go up yet again in 2024 as a result of lower inventory, which we'll talk about in just a second, and increased demand. It's just a simple, simple economic uh, algorithm. So I believe home prices will go up by 3.5% uh, there or thereabouts, and we'll end up with the average home price being around $376,000. Now, here's what's interesting. If you look at the um, the image on screen right now, Fannie Mae uh, partnered with a company called Pulsenomics, okay? And they created this survey and they wanted to see, okay, U.S. home price expectations over the next five years. And I want you to see what, what happened here. So they had some of the panel, which was extremely optimistic, and they thought that home prices would go up by 40% in the next five years, up up 40% in the next five years. The average panel-wide, all the people that were participating in the survey uh, that Fannie Mae, Fannie Mae and Pulse Nomics did, thought that home prices between now and uh, 2028 would increase by 25%. Okay, we're talking about 2024, but over the next five years, panel-wide, they believe home prices are going to go up by 25%. And then the most pessimistic part of the survey also thought that between right now, the beginning of 2024, and the uh, in 2028, that home prices would go up by 10%. So you could see that nobody on the panel thought that home prices were going to go down, let, uh, let alone crash. So all this market or housing market crash stuff out there, all that clickbait, just be aware that of what the agenda is behind the message. Because we have zero data, none, no data from any economist uh, that believe home prices are going to go down. In fact, this is a really, really important survey that Fannie Mae just put out that the vast majority of the economists believe that home prices are going to go up. So I believe that they're going to go up by three, three and a half, maybe 4% in 2024. In 2025, they'll probably go up yet again because mortgage rates will continue to go down, demand will go up. So let's talk about inventory. Okay, so uh, as a result of higher demand, and again, inventory, which we're going to talk about in just a second, 2023 days on market actually increased year over year. And no surprise, right? When mortgage rates are 7.5% and 8, 8%, you've got the entire uh, housing market at a standstill, of course, houses are taking longer to sell. I believe that will inc or, uh, improve in 2024. I believe that in 2024, we'll see the average property come on and off the market within 34 days on average. And there's some other reports that talk about you know the vast majority, or not the vast majority, but about 20, 25% of homes that are selling are, are doing so within two weeks. And so I'll make some more videos about that later in the year about how many homes are selling for over the asking price, how many homes are selling within the first week, the first two weeks, so on and so forth. But on average, I believe that year over year, the average days on market will decrease, meaning that homes are going to be selling faster in 2024 than they did in 2023. 
as a result of lower mortgage interest rates and higher demand. Okay, so actually, let me go back to inventory. I kind of skipped over this for a second. So inventory, okay, we talked a lot about demand. Let's talk about inventory. So as we ended 2023, we have to say, okay, what are the active listings, the active homes that can be purchased on the market right now? There's about 760,000 active listings. I believe inventory will increase just a bit, but still very, very low. I think that will probably average around 775 to 800,000 homes for sale at any given time, which will put us at about 3.5 to 3.7 months worth of supply. Why does that matter? Well, we have to say, okay, what type of market are we uh, going to be in 2024? We're going to stay in a seller's market for 2024 and 2025. You see, we need about five, six months worth of inventory, which we're way off that. We got half of that. We need about five to six months worth of inventory to just have a balanced market or what I often call a neutral market. It's not a buyer's market. It's not a seller's market. We need five to six months worth of inventory just to have a neutral market. We have half of that right now. So as a result, 2024 will yet again be another market for sellers. It will be very competitive for buyers. Homes that are uh, in great condition, that are priced right, will sell quickly and most likely for multiple with multiple offers over the asking price. I will make another video uh, as we end Q1 in 2024, and I'll let you know what actually happened as a result of inventory and how many homes sold over the asking price and how many sold right away. So I believe that supply will hover around three and a half to 3.7 months worth of supply, keeping us in a seller's market yet again. All right. Now, let's talk about agent count. I'm talking about the number of licensed real estate agents, okay? As we end 2023, we're probably right around 1.5 million licensed real estate agents. I believe we're going to lose 20% of the market. And the reason for that is we're, we're, we're heading into a market that I believe is more of a professional's market. Although things are going to look better, we're still coming out of a very, very difficult year. And one that if, if agents haven't spent the last three to six months building a pipeline, they'll end up just going broke or having to leave the business because they're not coming into 2024 with, with a pipeline that they built in 2023, which is one reason. The other reason is um, with all that's happening with these real estate lawsuits and for the industry just under the scrutiny that it's in, I think there's a lot of people that are questioning, hey, do I really want to do I really want to, to go the distance in this career? And there's a lot of part-time people that I think that will, will exit the business. There's all kinds of reports in 2023 that we're, we're having you know, 20, 30,000 agents uh, a month leave the business. And so there was a really, really interesting analysis done by this company called KBW. I want to read it to you because they talked about not 20% of the industry leaving. They had talked about a million realtors leaving the business. Now, I don't think that we're going to see a million realtors leave the business uh, anytime soon, but I do believe that we're probably going to lose about 20% of the licensed real estate agents in 2024. But let me read you uh, a little bit of what this uh, analysis said. It said that based on conversations with brokerage industry participants, they believe that the top 20% of agents are responsible for 80 to 90% of the transactions while the top 10% of agents are responsible for approximately two-thirds of the transaction. That's another reason why you see a lot of the part-time agents or, or the agents that are not winning at a high level leaving the business. The top 20% is doing almost all the business. Okay, So here's what it said. We believe agent participation in the industry could decline materially with a complete unbounding of commissions and ensuring reduction in the annual commission pool. I'm comparing agent counts relative to annual home sales in 10 other countries. The analysis found that the ratio in Canada, which has a similar market and structure to the US with a dominant trade association and, and cooperative compensation policy is virtually identical to the US system. Now listen closely. Excluding the US and Canada, uh, excluding US and Canada, the ratio of home sales to agents generally ranges from about 10 to 20, with a medium of 16, the report reads. 
this would suggest that the agent count in the U.S. could theoretically decline to approximately 300,000 to 600,000 over time, or by 60 to 80% based on the current NAR membership of 1.6 million. So they're saying if NAR's 1.6 million, they're thinking, wow, we could lose a million agents if uh, some certain things happen in the industry. They went on to say, a real challenge for brokerages in the coming years will be articulating the value proposition of buy side agents or buyer agents, particularly given uh, that many homeowners find that home uh, find the home the purchase on the internet. Perhaps even specialist or hybrid models could gain traction. So they did a deep dive on the number of agents. They believe over the next couple of years we could lose up to a million licensed real estate agents, depending on what happens with this buyer agent thing. But putting that aside, because I think that will probably be a couple of years out before we see any significant change to the buyer agent. We'll, we'll probably, and it just makes sense, right? So as the market, uh, as the real estate market was on its way up, right, over the last probably five to 10 years or so, you see membership of licensed real estate agents also increase. So as transactions go down, you see the exact same thing happen. So it's not really a surprise. Most of you say, yeah, that probably makes sense. I mean, we're coming out of a market where we were doing six, 6.2, 6.5 million transactions. I mean, everybody was a real estate agent. Everybody you knew was becoming a real estate agent. Everybody they knew knew a real estate agent. So while the market is hot, people flood the industry. As the market uh, goes down, people leave the industry and what's left over are the full-time professional real estate agents. So those are my housing predictions of 2024. Obviously, I don't have a crystal ball. We're going to find out what's going to happen. But based on the data, based on my studies and looking at the market every single month, that is what I believe to happen later this year.